Hello, Beth. Welcome today. to Sunny City. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Hi, I'm Paul Rushworth Brown, and welcome to History Bards and Down Under Interviews. I am here with a wonderful author who's written a fantastic book, and I'm so, so like thrilled to 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 uh, speak to him today, Travis Davis. Welcome to the show, Travis. Paul, thank you very much for having me, uh, and thanks for the kind words about my book. Books for men who don't read, and I think this this book would be <laughs> a uh, a prime example of a book that should be on there. Right. Uh, matter of fact. Uh, so my childhood friend, uh, he doesn't read much. He got the book. His wife said he actually read it and loved yeah. it. So yeah, yeah. so that's, that's a perfect point right there. And by the way, folks, we didn't even talk about this before. That's a perfect point. Even so like uh, when I uh, mentioned on social media that you were coming on the show, I mean, there was, there was sort of like comments left, right and center. You know, can, can you share this? Can you share this? So um, there's a lot of people out there so like really interested to find out more about your book. Um, so so one of four, uh, just give us a, a give us a bit of a rundown. Yeah. So the title one of four comes from the fact that in October 1921, four unknown soldiers were exhumed from the four national cemeteries in France. Out of those four, one was chosen for the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in Washington, D.C. This is his story. Yeah, well, it was a diary that I made up based on historical facts. Okay, all right. Okay, yeah, yeah. and uh, from what I understand about the book, um, obviously he was he was killed, but uh, a young French girl actually found the diary. Yes, so she witnessed uh, the bravery of him with his soldiers as they got uh, killed, and she wanted to try to help them because they had done so much for her country. And she felt they were almost the same age as her. So she ran out there and tried to help them. But the sheer carnage because of modern warfare, World War One was the first modern warfare, machine gun accurate artillery, uh, that she couldn't do it. She just she just knelt and prayed. And then she tried to go out there and wanted to help. They were they were already gone. And out in the outstretched hands of that soldier that she saw being a hero or heroic was his Bible or his diary. And each soldier in World War I was given a diary to write their, their feelings, try to help them with the, you know, thousand yard stare or shell shock, whatever you want to call it. And she heard a voice, and not an angry voice, but a young, soothing voice of a young man saying, pick it up, pick it up. So she takes it and uh, she can't read English, right? But she takes it and keeps it for safekeeping. Okay. All right. Yeah. Now you were in the military yourself for, for quite a while, weren't you? Yeah. Um, uh, so 20 years. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 20 years I was a, uh, I, well, I quit high school in 11th grade on a Friday, Tuesday I was in basic training in Fort Knox, Kentucky. And at the time it was called 11 Delta. Uh, they switched over to 19 Delta, so armored reconnaissance specialist. So I spent a large portion of my time uh, patrolling the east-west German border okay. during the Cold War. Okay. Um, thank you for your service. I think that's what oh, the you. Americans all, all always say to to each other yeah, if they've been yeah, in the armed services. A two-part historical novel by Julian Delamotte immerses readers in the turbulent period leading to the Norman conquest of England in 1066. The novel vividly portrays a kingdom in crisis invaders. With meticulous research, Senlac brings to life the battles and intricate politics of the era. This meticulously crafted work is poised to be a landmark in historical fiction, 
captivating fans with its authenticity and emotional depth. Julian de la Motte was born in L'Université of York. Charles Maclair, nominated for the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction, said, somehow Julian summons up an image of the Europe of 1,000 years ago. And what happens is, you know, the, the father and son are in Paris on, on a last trip to try to get together, very estranged. And they decide to walk into the bookstore in Paris, which is still around today. And I actually went to Paris this summer and gave them a book. Okay. <laughs> what a book. <laughs> and uh, so they go in there and they have, the son just feels gravitated towards the back of the thing and the Bible. They, they buy it and it opens up and it's a diary. And the father can see something in his son's eye that he hadn't saw in a long time as interest and really enthusiasm. And it's like, he says, Hey dad, uh, I'll, I want it to be read. It wants me to read it. You can, you can feel it. And so they decide to retrace the this, this soldier's footsteps while they're in France. And it brings them back together because now the son can see what war did to his dad. Why his dad is like he is. But then also opens his eyes to history. His ability to be a soldier, to advance to the rank of corporal and have him lead soldiers in combat. You know, the character has no main, no attributes at all. I don't know if he's left-handed, right-handed, tall, skinny. I don't know anything about him. And I, I did that purposely because I had to maintain the uh, who that soldier is actually the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. That was the uh, that was the utmost thing that I had to do. Step into the rugged world of Plymouth, 1620, where Sarah, a courageous woman, embarks on an unforgiving journey in the new world. Amidst the treacherous unknown, she faces starvation, death, and the harsh realities of early colonial life. On the wings of the red-tailed hawk, masterfully weaves historical authenticity with an inspiring tale of resilience, as Sarah discovers her inner strength to survive against overwhelming odds. This award-winning novel, lauded for its evocative writing and powerful portrayal of women's triumphs in history, is a must-read for lovers of gripping historical fiction. Join Sarah on her harrowing yet empowering journey and witness the indomitable spirit that defines the true pioneers of America. Yeah. But it does have a couple things where he'll meet, uh, he is in a trench and a guy comes up and he's going to, the German, and he's going to shoot him, right? And the guy says, stop, stop. I'm an American. He goes, yeah, right. And it happens to be William Dulles, who's the first uh, director of the CIA. And I did some research, and yes, he was in World War II, and he did speak German. So I, I did a tremendous amount of research. I put the soldier in a scene where a lieutenant won the Medal of Honor. It's, it's, it, they, that's true. He met Harry Truman because who Harry Truman was an artillery officer, and he took him out to a forward observation post and secured it for him. So I wanted to put those things in there, kind of make it, you know, kind of the levity of it, but realistic because those are real things are real people. And that's yeah. the only names in the book. Sergeant Younger, who was the one that chose the soldier to go to the tomb, October 21st, 1921. And those three are the only names in the book. Everybody else is a rank or a nickname. They don't quite see the importance of it as much anymore. So I, I think by reading one of four, I believe, and, and I've been, you know, I've, even people that put out uh, some of the, the bread, it's a, it needs to be a history book. It needs to be in, you know, in high school or at least college because it tells a story in a way that it's, it's, it's a history lesson, but it's a story behind the history lesson. Oh, we always should, uh, you know, uh, freedom has a price. Bard Singh of Love and War is a captivating historical novel set in 11th century Wales where love, honor, and ambition clash amidst the Norman invasion. As Chief Bard Rodri mentors young Tao, the tale unfolds with political intrigue, familial loyalty, and forbidden romance, centering on Griffith Rees's quest to reclaim his kingdom and win Gwenlian's heart. Amidst King Henry I's campaigns, and betrayals within King Gruffid Sinan's court, a web of deception, secret marriages, and daring rescues promises to enchant fans of epic romance and adventure. Baby, You're Worth It follows the heart-wrenching story of Tabitha, a mother whose joy is shattered by unforeseen tragedy during the birth of her second child. Faced with the devastating consequences of medical errors, Tabitha must navigate life-altering decisions, balancing her job, her mother's deteriorating health, 
and the needs of her children. Amidst pain and trauma, Tabitha embarks on an inspiring journey of courage, love, and resilience to reclaim her happiness and heal what's broken inside. Human life, and that human life are the sons and daughters that, you know, most part volunteer to do it. And I think it's just a, a shame. You know, we don't have to have reverence for soldiers, That's, but, you know, it's just something about being able to, you know, sign up for something that you, you know, what they say is you, you know, you, you give a blank check to Uncle Sam, basically, right? Uh, so I, I think it's just important. And I think the way to communicate that with people is to read, but read in a way that's enjoyable, where it's just not a history book, but it's a book about history. It's an emotional book. Uh, yeah. I, I feel I put my heart and soul into it. Yeah. And, and I want, that's what I want people to get out of it. That, you know, they're, they're, you can learn from history, no matter what. Yeah. And it yeah. could be from the strangest things that you ever think of as, as a 106 year old diary yeah. from a soldier can bring a father and son back together. Yeah. Amazing. What, what's next? What's next? I'm, I'm actually, uh, writing, I have kind of two books and, and uh, I'm thinking about writing a character out of one of four uh, a, a, a book. And then I'm also doing uh, a Korean war. Uh, okay. Book. Yeah. All right. Uh, historical fiction. Wonderful. All right. So Travis has been wonderful having you on the show. Well, thank um, you. I'm definitely going to read that book because as I say, my great grandfather was in the, in, was in world war one. And uh, I'd like to get sort of like, uh, I'd like to sort of like, um, get your insight after all the research into into what his sort of like day-to-day -day life was so thanks yeah. for being on the show and great to meet you and good luck with the rest of your, your novels thank you sir i appreciate it thanks paul cheers bye